to Pro-Life Primetime News. I'm Leslie Palma. And I'm Teresa Watson. The abortion landscape in the United States changes on a daily basis as a result of last week's Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade. Abortion is outlawed in several states, including Alabama, Arkansas, Kentucky, Missouri, Oklahoma, South Dakota, and Wisconsin, and bans will go into effect later this summer in Idaho, Mississippi, and North Dakota. Abortion was outlawed briefly in Louisiana, Utah, and Texas, but state courts have blocked those laws and abortion has resumed in those states. The ACLU and abortion providers, including Planned Parenthood, have challenged bans in other states with decisions expected soon. Several states have enacted so-called heartbeat bills, like the one in Texas, that protects babies as soon as a heartbeat can be detected, about six weeks into pregnancy. Heartbeat laws are now being enforced in Ohio, South Carolina, and Tennessee. There's an interesting situation in Wisconsin. No one seems to know if abortion is legal or not. A law on the books since 1849 bans abortion in every instance except to save a mother's life, but it's being challenged by the Attorney General who says the law is so old that modern generations never consented to it. While confusion reigns in the state, providers have stopped performing abortions. Welcome back. It's been a week since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade and returned regulation of abortion to the states. I've asked Father Frank Pavone, National Director of Priests for Life, to join us this evening to talk about what's been happening during this momentous week. Father Frank? Several states had laws on their books, some going back as far as 1849, to outright ban abortion, uh, but they were never able to enact them since the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision. Now that Roe v. Wade has been overturned, so, some several states have banned abortion outright, only to have state courts block the laws. Was this something you anticipated, and what happens next? Well, a lot of states have been able to enact uh, successfully their laws, whether they were trigger laws or pre-existing uh, laws. But yes, we expected fully that the pro-abortion people would try on the state level what they've been doing on the federal level, that is, try to claim in some way that their state constitution would allow abortion. So, you know, these, these disputes will work themselves out. These, these uh, litigation efforts will have to play themselves out. But I think that the Dobbs case provides a lot of good argumentation that the attorneys on the state level can now use uh, to, uh, to say what Dobbs said, let the people decide, not judges. Mm -hmm. And this becomes an election issue because some state judges are elected. Oh, and, and as much as they're mm -hmm. elected, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's an election issue too, even if they're appointed mm -hmm. uh, in regard to the campaigns of the people who appoint them. Mm -hmm. All right, abortion supporters this week have been talking about the need to pass a federal law guaranteeing the right to abortion. And House Speaker Nancy Pelosi continues to push the Women's Health Protection Act, which the House passed but has died twice in the Senate. It's an extreme bill that would repeal every state law reg regulating abortion. Does this bill demonstrate how out of touch the Democrats are with the American people? And if so, how can pro-lifers exploit this weakness? It shows how, how out of touch they are. You know, the weakness of the bill is that it's so extreme. Uh, people need to know that. That's what we need to do as pro-life people, have the voters understand how extreme it is. Even the legislators may not be aware how extreme it is. But people listening, for example, who are parents and have minor age daughters, you want to know if your daughter goes to an abortion facility? You know, those are some of the laws that are in place in most states that a bill like this would, would aim to get rid of. It's all meant to increase the abortion industry's profit, increase business for the abortion industry. So we've got to keep shining the light. You know, they've been trying the abortion side to pass a, a, an extreme measure like this for decades, even since the Clinton years. So uh, then they've never succeeded because there have never been any survey of the American people that shows that they want such an extreme policy. Mm -hmm. And this week we've seen protests in places like California, New York, and Vermont, all across the country really. But in these places, abortion is still very legal and yeah. available throughout pregnancy. Yeah. Do you think people misunderstand what the Supreme Court uh, did? I, I think a lot, of them, they, yeah, a lot of them are ignorant of what the situation really is. Uh, either what the Supreme Court was actually saying that, you know, you can still keep abortion legal if your law lawmakers decide it. And they have decided it in uh, Vermont, California, and mm -hmm. New York. So uh, do these people not know that? I, I bet a lot of them don't. 
But also remember, there's a push for, uh, well, first of all, there's a certain kind of, of pro-abortion person who will protest even if a single abortion is prohibited anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world. And they're, they're just this fanatical that way. And others very deliberately are trying to push for an international human right of abortion. And that is at the core of what some of these people are saying. So they'll protest anywhere at any time because mm -hmm. of any abortion limitation. But uh, yeah, again, it just shows their extremism. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you very much for joining us, and I'm, I'm sure you'll be back. Yes, thank you. Happy The decision to have an abortion not only affects that moment in your life. Kristen Gordon. It affects many precious moments to come. I now pronounce you man and wife. Please remember, where there's life, there's hope. A message from Priests for Life. The U.S. government seems to have joined the abortion cartel. On Tuesday, the Department of Health and Human Services launched a website that helps women and minor girls find out where to go for an abortion. ReproductiveRights.gov has information on both surgical and chemical abortion, and even tells visitors how they can get help paying for the abortion. Many of the sections refer to the site abortionfinder.org, which was created and funded by Planned Parenthood, the National Abortion Federation, and independent abortion profiteers. Abortion Finder also refers women under 18 to a third site, ReproLegalHelpline.org, that tells these minors how to have an abortion without their parents' knowledge. It's no surprise that national leaders are colluding with the abortion industry. The day the Supreme Court announced its decision on Roe v. Wade was a sad day for the court and the country, President Biden said, while House Speaker Nancy Pelosi called the decision outrageous and heart-wrenching, and also inexplicably read a poem called I Have No Other Country by an Israeli poet. Even her supporters scratched their heads over that. In an immediate reply to the U.S. Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade last Friday, the Biden administration created a new pro-abortion benefit for federal employees. On Monday, a document was published by the U.S. Office of Personnel Management. This document states that federal employees may now use sick days if they or one of their family members needs to travel for medical care. While the document does not mention abortion, it is well known that the Biden administration believes that medical care includes killing unborn babies. I had an opportunity this week to meet with Janet Marana, Executive Director of Priests for Life, to break this down and discuss other options that the government should be spending funds on to help women and children with real medical care. Hello, I'm Teresa Watson, and I'm here today with Janet Marana, the Executive Director of Priests for Life. Hi, Janet, welcome. Oh, well, glad to be here, Teresa. Thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. And Janet, I wanted to discuss with you today the immediate response by the Biden administration to the Supreme Court ruling uh, overturning Roe v. Wade, where he created a new benefit for federal employees, where it allows them to, to use sick time for medical care for them or their family that would require them to go out of state. What does this really mean? Well, what he's really saying is, okay, if your state does not provide for abortion, we're gonna pay to help you get to where you need to go. <clears throat> now, okay, all well and good, but my question to President Biden really is, if you're willing to do that for a woman to kill her baby, what will you do for a woman who needs help in keeping her baby? Exactly. I mean, if it's real choice, then let's offer the choice, right? And then the other thing, too, is for federal employees, why won't you extend maternity leave? Why won't you do that? I mean, this is these are the kind of things, if you really want to empower women to be moms, which that's by nature for them, then give them the resources they need. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, Janet, the anti-abortion movement um, has often been criticized, right? We're criticized a lot, saying that we don't care about, um, we don't support women during their pregnancies or after 
childbirth. Right. Well, a good right. friend of ours, Peggy Hartshorn, the former president of Heartbeat International, she recently stated that members of the pregnancy help movement, okay, right. strive to make abortion unwanted now and unthinkable in future generations. She said that no woman should ever feel forced to have an abortion because of lack of support or practical alternatives. You mentioned some of them, but what are some ways that the federal government could use these funds to help pregnant women and help the babies afterwards? Well, first of all, as Peggy is stating, there are 2,800 pregnancy resource centers all over the United States. There are just a little bit over 600 freestanding abortion clinics. Now, Planned Parenthood, through Title X, the government funds a whole bunch of money, goes to them, to provide abortions. Of course, they think most of it isn't going to provide abortions, but it really is. We know that's their cash cow. So my question to the Biden administration is, if we really have choice, how about we split that money? This big, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars that go just to the abortion industry, why can't half go to the pregnancy resource industry and half to the abortion industry. To me, that's real choice. But they won't consider that. Isn't that terrible? Yeah, and again, maternity leave in the United States should be expanded. I mean, countries like Norway and Sweden, uh, they give uh, like a whole year that the government pays maternity yeah. leave because they put motherhood as a top thing on their list. And also, too, did you know most of Europe only allows abortion up to 12 weeks? And here in the United States, even though we overturned Roe v. Wade, there are a lot of states that already have laws like New York, California, uh, Oregon, Washington, Vermont, Illinois, and it keeps growing, that will still allow abortion till birth. We are like communist China, North Korea, and other communist nations. Shame on the United States, and shame that we can't do more for mothers. Yeah. Well, what about all these pregnancy centers now that struggle, right? A, a mm -hmm. lot of them are in small rural communities. And um, what do you say to people? How, how can we help them? What can we do? Oh, very simply, Teresa. They can, I challenge all our viewers right now, go to pregnancycenters.org, go to that website, put in your zip code, you'll see where the nearest pregnancy center is to right where you live. I mm -hmm. just tell you, go visit them. Offer to volunteer. And if you have some extra money, why don't you offer to, to donate? to that pregnancy center. Encourage your church family to partner with that pregnancy center. There's so much that can be done. So again, pregnancycenters.org, put your zip code in and get involved today. That's great advice, Janet. So, you know, there's so much more for us to talk about, of right, <laughs> on this topic. So will you come back and again? Absolutely. Okay, so one last question. If you had an opportunity to talk to President Biden, about this new benefit, okay, that mm -hmm. um, that he's giving federal employees, what would you say to him? I would say, well, uh, President Biden, <coughs> I shouldn't call him that, but I will. President Biden, please know, you need to listen to what abortion does to women. I challenge you to go to abortiontestimony.com. Read the stories of women who've had abortions. It doesn't always turn out as well as you think. Physical, psychological damage. You're actually providing a gateway for women to be hurt more and also destroy the lives of children. Why not invest more in motherhood and babies? Amen. Well, thank you, Janet, for taking the time to be okay. with me here today. Absolutely. And uh, we thank you. I'm Teresa Watson. I want to be a fireman and I go up. I want to be a teacher. I want to be president of the United States. I want to find a cure for cancer. The choice to have an abortion alters the course of the future. Please remember, where there's life, there's hope. A message from Priests for Life. Singer Pink went on a Twitter rampage this week to say that anyone who is happy to see Roe go should never listen to her music again. And Green Day frontman Billy Joe Armstrong told a British audience he will renounce his U.S. citizenship and move to England since abortion is no longer legal on a national level here. Someone might want to tell Armstrong that in the United Kingdom, two doctors have to agree an abortion is necessary before a mother can terminate a pregnancy and it must be carried out by a licensed physician. Also, in Phoenix last week, the singer Halsey gave an impassioned speech about her love for abortion and then watched as fans left the stadium in droves. The number of companies offering benefits to employees who cross state lines to kill their children continues to grow. Some of the big names include Airbnb, Amazon, CVS, Macy's, Netflix, PayPal, Uber, Yahoo, and Walt Disney. 
No word on if these companies will help employees hoping to adopt. Shortly after the Supreme Court ruling on Roe v. Wade was announced last week, Facebook and Instagram began taking down posts that offered abortion pills to women in states where they are banned. A spokesman for Meta, the parent company of both social media giants, said the company prohibits the sale of guns, alcohol, and drugs on its site. Abortion supporters say they are being unfairly targeted. And now we turn to political news. In the last year, over one million voters across 43 states have switched to the Republican Party. It looks like the red wave has started, with the midterm elections just around the corner. Elon Musk said that he is ready to vote for a Republican candidate. Musk said that he is neither Republican nor Democrat, and in the past has overwhelmingly voted Democrat. However, that is about to change. Musk said, I might never have voted for a Republican. Just to be clear, now this election, I will. Lee Zeldin won the New York Republican primary for governor, defeating Andrew Giuliani, son of Rudy Giuliani, and two other opponents. He will face off with New York's Democratic governor, Kathy Hochul, this fall, who won her primary on Tuesday. Hochul, an abortion extremist, is currently serving out the remainder of former New York governor Andrew Cuomo's term after Cuomo resigned from office last year in a sexual misconduct scandal. A political earthquake in California has the left on the run. Earlier this month, voters in deep blue California rebuked Democrats in both the Bay Area and Southland. In San Francisco, a progressive prosecutor was recalled, and in Los Angeles, a billionaire former Republican is in the runoff for mayor. This shows that even in top Democratic power centers, midterm year liberal voters are fed up. It's a bleak sign for Biden as Dems try to hold on to the House and Senate in November. Political analyst Ron Brownstein stated the result of the midterm elections will rattle the political landscape from coast to coast. And that's this week's political news in a nutshell. Set me free 
finally tonight, we'd like to share an amazing example of the pro-life movement's dedication to helping mothers in need. The Washington Post published a story on June 20th about a young woman in Texas who wanted to abort her twin girls but couldn't because their heartbeats were detectable and abortion is illegal in the Lone Star State after that point. After reading the story, actress Patricia Heaton and other pro-life leaders helped to raise $50,000 in just 24 hours to help the new family. Last week, Brooke Alexander set up a GoFundMe page to help her and her husband buy diapers and formula and pay their housing and vehicle bills. Brooke is quoted saying, I am 18 years old and I have two four-month-old twins. My husband is also 18 and just left for basic training and I'm worried I won't be able to provide for us. A pro-life leader shared a link to the fundraiser on Twitter asking people to support and encourage the family. Heaton, a pro-life advocate and award-winning actress known for her roles in The Middle and Everybody Loves Raymond, also shared the fundraiser on her Twitter page that day. The donations quickly came pouring in along with messages of encouragement from pro-lifers across the country. $50,000 was raised in 24 hours and to date more than $70,000 has been raised for the family. Pro-lifers are often criticized for not caring about babies once they're born or for their mothers, but this outpouring of support for the young family demonstrate pro-lifers' dedication to helping families in need. It's something we have done for decades and will continue to do now that the U.S. Supreme Court has overturned Roe v. Wade. Now that states are once again able to protect unborn babies from abortion, pro-life advocates are working hard to expand support services for families through pregnancy resource centers, maternity homes, adoption agencies, and more. Thank you so much for joining us on Pro-Life Primetime News, produced at Priest for Life headquarters in Titusville, Florida. We hope you will join us every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. If you have an idea for a story or would like to expose something in the abortion industry, please email us at media at priestsforlife.org. We hope that you will support this show and all of our broadcasts, including Just Ask Janet and Primetime Live with Father Frank, by making a donation to ProLifeGift.org. These donations help fund all of our work here at Priests for Life. I'm Teresa Watson, Executive Manager of Priests for Life. And I'm Leslie Palma, Communications Director. And remember, life is the only choice.